Hello YouTube, today we're making lemon blueberry sweet rolls. To start off we're going to need a lemon. We're going to zest the whole outside of the lemon and reserve it in a bowl and set it aside. When you're zesting a lemon you don't want to go any deeper uh, than just the yellow part. You don't want to get any of the white part because that is bitter. So just carefully take a zester this is a nice little tool and get just the yellow part. We're going to juice our lemon into a bowl and just be sure to remove any seeds that may fall into the bowl. We're going to set this aside also. Uh, we're going to use the lemon zest as part of our filling and flavor enhancer for the lemon blueberry sweet rolls. We're going to add a cup of sugar to it and a teaspoon of lemon juice to incorporate those ingredients together to add a really nice flavor along with the blueberries for the inside of the sweet rolls. We're going to add half a cup of sugar. This is a one-fourth scoop. So we're going to add two of those in which equals a half a cup. I'm going to take a spoon and mix it up well. It's going to get a little wet looking, kind of like brown sugar, not real wet. It's going to look a little wet because you got the oils from the lemon zest, which is, like I said, a lot of your flavor. Once I get this nice and incorporated, we're going to add just one teaspoon of lemon juice. You don't want to add any more than that because it'll become too wet for the inside of the mixture. Like I said, we did remove the seeds. You don't want any seeds in your, in your dessert. These rolls are not, you would think with all the sugar, they would be really, really sweet, but they're not. Uh, the tartness cuts a lot of the sweet out, and uh, the blueberries are a little bit tart. I'm going to mix this well because it is going to start melting as it sits for just a few minutes while we roll out the dough. We're going to take our pastry cutter and we're going to be kneading about three quarters of the recipe. You could use the whole uh, recipe of the dough if you wanted to, but I have plans for the remaining part of the dough, so we're only going to use three quarters of it. You are going to need to flour down heavy on your bench. Uh, this bench board that I use is actually a cutting board, but I use it for nothing but doughs and pastas and things like that. It's not used for meat or vegetables ever. It's strictly used with uh, anything with flour in it. I use it to roll out my dumplings, make pizza dough on. Uh, it's a great kneading board. The way it fits up against the cabinet, it sets level. You are going to use liberal amounts of flour because this is a sticky wet dough. This dough is really simple to make up. If you haven't seen the other recipe, we'll link it below. Uh, it's a dough that sets overnight. It's a no-need multi-purpose multi dough. Uh, I've used it to make dumplings, donuts. Uh, anything I've used it with, it's been great. So if you've got a recipe that requires dough, it's been, you know, it would be great. I'm even going to try some fruit pies in it or like some stuffed pressed pies. Even though it's not a crust, it's like a bread dough. Uh, it'll taste more like a just bread stuffed with these preserves or whatever. We're going to take our rolling pin and we're going to roll this out, and we're going to try to cover as much of this surface as possible. So it's going to be rolled out pretty thin. So we've got our dough rolled out. We're going to melt a. This is three quarters of a stick of butter. And we are going to reserve one tablespoon of this butter for the lemon glazed topping. It's actually a cooked topping. Try to equally distribute the butter over the crust. We're actually going to take our fingers and smear it all around and make sure we get every part of this dough wet with the butter. When you wet the dough with the butter, it enables the sugar to stick with it. It also keeps the dough from tasting uh, dry. Should, the butter is going to help melt the sugar. We reserve that tablespoon of butter for the glaze. 
that we're actually going to cook on the stove. It's a really good glaze. Yeah, it has a grand, fantastic taste. I can sit and eat it like pudding. I'm going to wash my hands and we're going to get the sugar, lemon, and lemon juice, lemon zest and lemon juice mixture. We'll stir it around a little bit and then we're going to get it down on the dough. We're using a heaping cup of blueberries also. This is also how I make cinnamon rolls, except I use brown sugar and cinnamon with butter. And I like to even add craisins or raisins and even pecans or walnuts in it. And I thought, thought of this recipe last night. I thought mm, that would be a good combination. So decided we would try it, and man, it turned out fantastic. Okay, we've got all the sugar down, and we'll take the spoon and, and kind of smear it out and knock the high tops off, which is the, the sugar that's wanting to stick up. Make sure we've got an equal distri distribution of the sugar throughout the dough. get this spread out we're going to start adding our blueberries you don't want to add too many blueberries because blueberries are wet so your dough would actually just take all that moisture and just soak it up so you would think and that doesn't sound like a lot of blueberries and it doesn't look like a lot until you get it rolled up and cut and in the pan you'll see that you've got a lot of blueberries in this recipe Lost the blueberry on the floor, but the dog has it. Just kind of spreading them out a little bit. That way we get an equal coverage of blueberries throughout the dough as we roll it up. You're going to want to have your pastry scraper handy or your dough scraper because it is going to stick to this surface. Even though we floured it down a lot, it's still going to stick. So we we'll use our so to pull it on it, we're just going to use our pastry scraper to separate it from the board so we can keep rolling it. You're going to want to have a 9 by 13 pan greased and ready. If these guys are going to need to rise around two to two and a half hours. This dough does have some of my sourdough starter in it. I will do a video in the next couple of days and show y'all how to incorporate the sourdough in with this when you're making up the dough. So if you want to have sourdough flavoring in your dough, you still have the benefits of this dough being a no-need recipe and then have the sourdough flavor. We're going to pull the, up so we lost the blueberry, we'll stick it back in. Just kind of pull the dough, tuck it over a little bit. Don't want to pull on it too much because it will uh, tear. I just kind of took my bench scraper and moved it over a little bit so we'd have a little bit more room to cut it. But as we cut these rolls, we're going to cut them around an inch and a quarter thick. We're going to use the scraper where we cut to lift up the rolls and place them in the pan. So you'll see I'm cutting down and using my hand to hold it to the scraper and placing them in the pan. Cut down, hold the roll, the roll place it over in the pan. That way when you're picking them up you're not losing the filling out the inside. <clears throat> this especially works well <clears throat> excuse me for if you're doing cinnamon rolls because all the brown sugar wants to fall out the center. <clears throat> excuse me that sinus strange. You get them all cut and placed in the pan. Just try to spread them out evenly. I think we ended up with 13 in this pan, so we had to make a little bit of an adjustment to get everything in there so they would be equally distributed through the pan. Once we get them all in the pan, we're going to set them aside to rise. Uh, you wouldn't need to try to even think about putting them in the oven before two hours. Uh, I did cover these with foil, but I sprayed the foil with some pan so they wouldn't stick. But we are sitting out a long time. You can place them in your oven or in your microwave. Uh, 
I just don't like leaving things out that aren't, aren't covered. Next, we're going to make our glaze for the uh, go on the topping when it comes out of the oven. I took two cups of sugar and placed it in the food processor. You could just use powdered sugar if you want, but I like the texture better myself of the sugar versus powdered sugar. So I just chop it a little bit in the food processor. It doesn't take long. This is a full cup of sugar. So if you used only a cup of powdered sugar, it wouldn't be enough. You'd have to probably use at least a cup and a half to a cup and three quarters. This doesn't make it into fine sugar. It just enables it to melt a little bit faster because we're not going to cook this long on top of the stove. The dust was coming out, so I covered the, the hole with the scoop. We're going to use our reserved butter that we had left over from the filling and place it in the saucepan. We're going to add our cup of sugar that's been chopped in the food processor. As you can see, it's not real fine, but it does chop it up pretty good. We're also going to add one third cup of milk and just a little bit of the juice. After I added the milk, it wasn't enough to get everything wet, so I added just a little bit of the lemon juice to get everything wet. You don't want to add your lemon juice at this point because it's going to evaporate some of the moisture out of this glaze, and we don't want to lose any of our lemon flavor. So we're going to keep all that juice. As you're stirring it, you'll see when it starts to cook, we have it on medium heat, we're stirring constantly. It'll start forming bubbles. This is telling you I'm fixing to come to a boil and you want to be ready for it because with dense sugar mixtures, it can boil up on you really quick. And you'll see that this comes up pretty fast even with me whisking it. So be ready to pull it off the heat, see how fast it, it came up. You cannot leave this on the stove unattended or even walk to the sink because uh, it will boil over and you'll have a mess to clean up on your stove. So let it boil just a little bit. I'll cut it off and we're going to remove it from the heat and add the remaining part of the lemon juice to this. I kept whisking it as it was cooling down a little bit because I want to make sure that it's melted. Okay, our rolls have risen. They've been here for about two and a half hours. We're going to place them in the oven on 350 degrees and we're going to cook them 20 to 25 minutes. You want to see an even brownness throughout the whole top of the rolls. Okay, we took our thermometer, put it in the roll, and see it's at 166. So around 165 to 170 is a good temperature to know that your bread is done on the, in the center. We're going to add our glaze. And drizzle it over the rolls as evenly as possible. You can see how thick it got, and we really didn't cook it that long on top of the stove. But if you allow it to cool, it shows you if it got thick enough or not. If it didn't get thick enough, then you could put it back on the stove and cook it one more time to get a little bit of the moisture out of it. Uh, we probably had a little bit less than a half a cup of lemon juice that we used in this whole recipe. So it's not going to be overly tart, it's going to really have a good flavor. You want to put this on hot so it soaks into the roll as they're cooling down. Since this is, is more of a clear glaze, uh, you're going to see more of the natural roll and the blueberries are not going to be covered up by the white powdered sugar. If you like the white powdered sugar, it tastes better. To me, this is much smoother. It's uh, powdered sugar to me really never does melt, so it has a little bit of a grittiness to it. And this to me just has a better flavor. Hope you enjoyed this recipe. This is the Prepper Pressure Prepper channel. If you haven't joined our channel, do so by clicking the notifications. Subscribe and click the notifications bell so you get notifications about any new recipes coming out. Um, if you haven't checked out any of our other videos, check them out. Uh, we got a recipe on how to make your own brown sugar to make cinnamon rolls. So check that video out. Check out our Cracker Barrel Mock Chicken and Dumplings. Hope you have a great day. It's the Pressure Prepper. I'm out.